I originally started writing about food on Twitter, currently X. And when I say writing, it was really just some slightly fancy descriptions of what I ate for lunch every day for about 200 days over four years. That entire thread was mildly popular amongst the people that followed me. And I would regularly include a scientific fact about food, which would go viral. So eventually in 2020, realizing that there was an audience for the science of food, I wrote Masala Lab, the science of Indian cooking. And that book did well. And over the next three years, I started making short videos about food science on Instagram, where I discovered that people did not always have a good relationship with food. Most content there was fear-mongering and a lot of it unscientific. And the Instagram page did well. It reached a million followers this year. But along the while, I realized that there is only so much you can explain in 90 seconds. So I finally decided that I should take YouTube seriously. And here we are. And with my experience with debunking food-related myths on social media, I've come up with 12 lessons that I think can improve our relationship to food and by extension, nutrition and health. But before I start, it's important to realize that my focus is communicating science, not providing nutritional advice to individuals. I am not qualified to do that. If you have specific health or medical conditions, take your doctor's or nutritionist advice. On that note, let's start. Number one, single ingredients are neither villains nor heroes. Almost everything is okay in moderation. And there are no superfoods. It's overall diet that matters. Consider matter. Scaremongers say it sticks to your gut and it spikes your blood sugar. These are contradictory. It can't be both hard to digest and be rapidly digested. It is the latter. It is rapidly digested. Maida by itself lacks fiber and micronutrients, but that's not the only thing you eat. If you eat a luchi with a veg curry, that's a perfectly fine meal. The whole meal matters more than one ingredient. Likewise, curcumin and turmeric is good, but turmeric itself contains a very small amount, and you probably use a quarter teaspoon in an entire dish. So it's not going to magically solve any problems. Two, choice of cookware or appliances has little or no effect on the nutritional value of your food. Just use what is convenient and affordable. For example, the amount of aluminium leaching from cookware is tiny compared to what you get from drinking water and vegetables. Non-stick cookware at normal cooking temperatures do not release harmful chemicals. Cast iron might add some iron to your diet, but it's insignificant compared to what you get from your food and your body does not absorb that kind of iron very well. Watch my video on iron to understand this better. Another example, your daily exposure to benzene from traffic is far higher than from cooking chapatis on a flame. So focus on what you're cooking, not what you're cooking in. Three, eating more protein and strength training are the best investments you can make towards a healthy life. Most Indians consume only 20 to 30 grams protein daily when they really need 50 to 60 grams minimum. Complete protein doesn't automatically mean animal protein. If you combine dal, rice and yogurt, you have complete protein. Whey protein is not unnatural. It's as natural as paneer or ghee. Watch my videos on protein to understand this better. Strength training preserves muscle mass as you age. Muscle tissue uses up more blood sugar and keeps you independent for the longest time. If you see 70-year-old Indian people in airports, they use wheelchairs, while 80-year-old Europeans walk briskly. Number four, eating more vegetables, fruits, and legumes in your diet is fantastic for you. Reduce grains and fat. Green vegetables are amazing. They fill you up with fewer calories. Aim for different colors. Each represents different phytonutrients. Local seasonal vegetables are often more nutritious than exotic imports. When you consume fruits, try and consume more of the ones that are less sweet, like guava. Dals, legumes, are the best food, not just for you, but for your gut bacteria. The resistant starch in them is your gut bacteria's favorite food. Five, the amount of fat in your diet is more important than the choice of oil. Consume mostly monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats 
and saturated fats in moderation. Cold pressed versus refined is not as important as how much oil you use. Refined oils have a higher smoke point and are therefore more suitable for deep frying. They also last longer on the shelf. Don't go in search of the perfect oil. Consume a mix of them. Eat ghee when eating North Indian food and mustard oil when eating Bengali food. All oils are 100% fat. Healthy oils have the same calories as unhealthy ones. One tablespoon of any oil, 120 calories. Whether it's olive, coconut or groundnut. Your body requires a minimum amount of fat every day. Cardiologists recommend 500 milliliters of oil per month. That's about one tablespoon a day. So when it comes to fats, focus more on quantity and less on quality. Number six, cooking food at home is sattvic. Do as much of it as possible. Eating out or ordering food is rajasic. It's a lot of calories. Be mindful. Ultra processed food is tamasic. Special occasions only. Traditional cultural definitions of sattvic, rajasic and tamasic are not relevant in the wider Indian context. All they do is promote the vegetarian diets of a small minority while looking down on everything else. Your traditional food cooked at home is the best thing you can eat, provided you're paying attention to the balance of micronutrients, especially protein. Restaurant food typically uses two to three times more oil than home cooking, and portions are usually much larger than a single person needs. A restaurant dal tadka will use two to three tablespoons of oil for the tadka. Control over ingredients gives you control over health. At home, you have the fullest control. In a restaurant, less so. With packaged food, even the ingredients are modified to be calorie dense. Number seven, jaggery is sugar, ghee is fat, pink salt is salt, organic millet biscuits are still biscuits. Don't fool yourself. Your blood sugar doesn't know if sugar came from honey or white sugar. Marketing often exploits tradition for profit. Jaggery and sugar are similar in calories and will spike your blood sugar in similar ways. Natural does not automatically mean healthier. Number eight, additives in ultra processed foods are not the problem. The amount of snacks you eat is the problem. For example, fear of MSG is largely unfounded. It's naturally present in tomatoes and parmesan cheese. Preservatives in small amounts are safer than actual bacterial or fungal contamination. Focus on portion size and frequency. Fun fact, home fried snacks often have more fat than processed ones because industrial machines are better at temperature control and ensuring that too much oil does not stick to the snack. The dose makes the poison. Quantity matters more than mere presence. Number nine, air fryers, microwaves, and non-stick won't give you cancer. No single thing causes or cures cancer. Microwaves don't make food radioactive because microwaves have less energy than visible sunlight. Air fryers are just small convection ovens. Non-stick coatings are inert at normal cooking temperatures. Focus on evidence-based risks, not social media fears. If a risk had solid science behind it, it will be published in a respected journal, not be made into a short video. Number 10, detox is a scam. Only your liver and kidney detox. Eating healthy and in moderation allows your body to detox itself. No juice or tea can cleanse your body. Your liver processes toxins 24 seven. Best detox, adequate sleep, water, and a balanced diet. Our liver processes everything from medicines to alcohol naturally. So since all of you like natural, support this natural detox rather than seeking artificial detox. Number 11, the best diet is the one you can sustain. It's not about blueberries, avocados, or massive changes to what you traditionally eat. Small sustainable changes meet dramatic unsustainable ones. As Bruce Lee once said, long-term consistency always trumps short-term intensity. Local foods are often nutritionally equivalent to expensive imports. Best example, amla has more micronutrients than blueberries. Cultural food wisdom and eating practices often have withstood the test of time, so don't ignore them for some fad modern diet like keto, etc. 
An example, regular dal rice with vegetables and one egg is a better meal than a quinoa bowl with avocado and kale. So focus on habits you can maintain for years. And finally, 12. Content is not knowledge. It is, at best, a provocation to learn further. Videos on the internet cannot capture the full nuance and complexity of nutrition science. Even my videos. Always be skeptical of absolute claims about food. The world is incredibly diverse and people can be healthy or unhealthy on any diet. Good nutrition advice is boring and consistent and does not make for good content. Content is non-stick causes cancer or turmeric can cure cancer. Knowledge is thousands of pages of scientific studies that acknowledge the true complexity of the human body and refuse to accept superfoods or supervillains. Use social media content as a starting point for deeper learning. So consume healthy food, not social media. Explaining the science of food and debunking pseudoscience is hard work. So I request you to consider becoming a member of this channel. Members get to be part of a private group that will work together to dig into the science of food in far more detail and also discover the true joy of food.